girl, I can't lie. Have you ever seen a food review of a restaurant in your area and immediately send it to your friend because you guys have to check it out? And when you do check it out, it kinda sucks? Well, that happened to me. And when this happened, I was so confused because the TikTok I saw from the food influencer who reviewed it got amazing service and high quality food and I got the complete opposite. And that got me thinking, do you ever think that restaurants favor influencers over regular people? Are they the ones who are spoiled with the great service and amazing food because of their public image? Well, I think we should test this out. Chi Chi, how the hell are you gonna test this out? Well, first, I need to find a restaurant, a low-rated restaurant, where I think something like that would take place. But I live in Philly, and we are known for having the best food and the best service, so finding a bad restaurant here was quite hard. But lo and behold, I found one. Actually, two. The first restaurant is a 3.8 star rated restaurant called Mei Mei. They are described as a modern twist on Taiwanese cuisine with late night lounge aiming to provide a luxury service. But judging from the reviews, I am a bit skeptical. The second restaurant is a 4.1 rated restaurant Sin, standing for Steak Italian Nightlife. A lot of the reviews on TikTok and from friends have given this restaurant a questionable reputation, which is why it's perfect for this video. For this experiment, I need to go to each restaurant twice, once as Chichi Okibo, the student, the regular girl, the non-influencer, and then as Coco Janello, the fashion content creator with a following of almost 500,000 followers on social media. If we learned anything from my male gaze versus female gaze video is that people do treat you differently based off your outfit. So when I go as my regular self, I'm gonna wear what regular people wear. A t-shirt, a jacket, jeans, and sneakers. But my influencer alter ego Coco Janello is gonna go all out wearing a black mini dress, heels, and a big fur coat. Now that we have the piece of the puzzle together, let's put this plan in motion. This experiment revealed some rather interesting results, but before we dissect everything, I need to give you some context. I went to two restaurants four times over the course of two weeks. I went to Mei Mei first on a Wednesday, then Sin on a Saturday as Chi Chi. Then I went to Mei Mei again on the next Tuesday and Sin again two days later as Coco Janello, all having either a five o'clock or 5.30 reservation. I wanted to make sure the reservations were early during off-peak days and hours to give the restaurants a better chance of providing their best service. Also, it was important to me to go to the restaurants as Chi Chi first to lower the chances of being recognized as a repeat customer by staff. Along with that, when I went as Chi Chi, I came alone, but when I went as Coco Janello, I was accompanied by Jen to add to the influencer persona. Last but not least, I recorded everything as Chi Chi on my iPhone to remain incognito, but filmed the Coco parts on my big DSLR camera because it was kind of the point of the video. Now, let's start the recap. Hi guys, in honor of uploading in the summer, I want to give back to you guys. So I'm going to be doing giveaways in every other video. And I'm going to be giving away the same exact thing. A style mystery box from yours truly. So here's how this works. If you win, I'm going to ask you to send me a Pinterest board of your personal style and your sizes. And once I get those two things, I'm going to go out in my city and I'm going to shop for you guys. I'm going to curate the perfect outfit for you and you won't even know what's inside because it's a mystery box. All you have to do is follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, and then answer the question below in the comments. I'm going to be announcing the winner in my next video. I would not be anywhere without you guys, and I just want to give back. So I hope you guys enjoy these little videos and the giveaways along with it. Back to regular scheduled programming. Okay, it's Chi Chi from the future. Obviously you can tell because my hair is different, but let's recap what happened at these restaurants, starting with Mei Mei. I had a 5.30 reservation at Mei Mei on a Wednesday, right when the restaurant opened. I got in and I checked in. Hi, I have a um, 5.30 reservation. Can I have your name? Chi Chi. Huh? Yeah. Chi Chi? Yeah. Oh, just for you, okay. Yeah. Have you marked it and survived? Just give me one second so I can figure out just you, okay? Okay, thank you. 
And when I was checked in, I was taken to my seat, which was in the back of the room. Usually when restaurants just open, they see people from the back first and then they fill up the seats from the front as more people are coming in. And they do this to ensure that customers aren't like walking in between tables, potentially like disturbing someone else. I noticed this happened at Mei Mei and it happened at Sin. So I'm guessing this is like standard restaurant practice. So walking into Mei Mei, I knew I'd be seated in the back, but I did not expect to be seated in the back corner. But my server came immediately and she was so nice. And as I'm ordering, I'm asking her various questions and she's very knowledgeable. But one thing I noticed is that she didn't memorize the drinks menu from memory. She was reading off of whatever she was like holding to take my order from. The thing is about servers is that they're actually trained to memorize what's in the drinks, the name of the drinks and the prices of the drinks from memory. So I thought it was an interesting observation that she didn't. But nonetheless, she was very knowledgeable and she was answering all my questions. And eventually I ordered my food. Hi, um, um, can I have vegetable spring rolls? Yep, yeah, from the happy hour or Yes, normal? from the happy hour and also from the happy hour, can I have the kimchi fried rice? And instead of the sunny side up egg, can I have it scrambled within? Yep. And um, for your drink options, do you have any like martini type drinks? From happy hour? Yeah. Yes, the May Bay. So that's their martini style. It's served with rum, strawberry. So like a really nice strawberry, like tropical dish martini drink. So definitely recommend it. What's your favorite drink? My favorite drink here would probably just be the lychee martini in general. It's not on oh. um, happy hour, unfortunately. But from happy hour, probably would be the Dam Guy, which is like the Vietnamese vodka limeade, or the Mangarita. Mangarita? The May Garita. Oh, May. Yeah, so it's just our version of a classic bar. Mm, okay, then I'll wait on my drinks, but like, yeah, that's my food for now. Okay, I the mean, order drinks. Right? And then these Yeah. Thank you. You're but yeah, as I'm waiting for my food, it starts to get slightly busier. I'm pretty sure two different parties came in as I was waiting for my food, but I didn't think that would affect the wait time of my food because I already had my order into the kitchen by that time and they hadn't even ordered yet. And the food takes about 20 minutes to come out. And when my order did come out, it was wrong. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, I requested that my um, egg be scrambled with it. Thank you so much. In terms of the food, the food quality was good. I really liked my spring rolls, but I was not a fan of my kimchi fried rice. Not because of anything that they did, but more so just because I didn't like the taste of it. But yeah, as I was eating, I definitely felt forgotten about because like I said, as I was eating, I needed things like napkins and utensils, and it was really hard to get their attention as bigger parties started to come. I was definitely forgotten about, but eventually she did come and I paid and I left. And that was my experience as a regular person when I went to Mei Mei. Okay, so I just got out of Mei Mei and that was such a mediocre experience. Um, although the staff was nice, the customer service was just not the best and the food wasn't anything special either. Yeah, yikes. I can't believe I didn't even finish my food. Like all that rice, I didn't even, I didn't even eat it. I didn't even take it to go because it was bad. Not off to a good start. With Mei Mei, I would give the service because that's mostly what I'm concerned about because I feel like food's subjective. I would give the service like a five out of 10, just mainly because of where I was seated in the building. They got my order wrong. I felt like I was forgotten about. It was really hard to get their attention. So overall, I would give the service a five out of 10. A couple days after I went to Mei Mei as Chi Chi, I went to Sin as Chi Chi. And when I went to Sin, I came, I was seated right away, and I was seated in the back booth. The server was really nice and really knowledgeable, and he answered all my questions, and he knew everything by memory. Hi, um, I was thinking about getting an Aperol spritz, but I've actually never had it before. Have you? And what's it taste like? I haven't been chasing after those first actually. No, it's something that haven't really like doesn't come to like to my to taste, you know. Okay. Yeah. So which cocktail do you recommend? Okay, um so if you like something sweet, um it's a scent. It's gonna be like our version of uh, it's called the um, lemon drop. Uh, instead of um 
and sour mix or lemon juice, you put on lemon, lemon jello, and it, can, it comes with a graham cracker instead of uh, sugar rub. Or also, so if you want something like more smokier, uh, this is in Manhattan, that's going to come with a bourbon, and it's going to be served rocks. So it's basically, uh, what do you all prefer more? Do you have anything citrusy? Citrusy. So it will be the best book. That will be uh, some more citrus for the Italian meal. Okay. okay, I'll think about it. But okay. for now, I would like to order a Caesar salad Sorry. and um, the calamari. I'm gonna right now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Before you get your real food, there's like this complimentary like garlic bread that they give you and that was really nice. But overall, it took about 12 minutes for my food to come. The food was okay. It was a Caesar salad and calamari and I feel like you can't really get that wrong. I enjoyed my food. I ate it. I paid and then I left. Hey guys, so I just came back from Sin and I will say I did have a better experience at Sin than I did at Mei Mei. Yeah, like Sin is like overpriced but anyway i'm just kind of um upset that i spent literally 55 dollars there all i got was water calamari and a caesar salad 55 yeah the reviews were right the food is definitely overpriced because like it's mid at best and it's just like yeah i don't know maybe when i go next week as coco chanello i'll order something different so i can really see but like so far it's giving food is mid prices are high but customer service is great ambiance is great i didn't have a drink but everyone says the drinks are good we'll revisit this next week when i go as coco chanello the service wasn't good but the service wasn't bad there were no like red flags honestly like like i guess it was like good service like it was it was good service so it was a 7 out of 10 like i would say that so i don't think mediocre or mid is the greatest term to you so i'm pretty sure when i was leaving i said is mid but like yeah i don't think it's like mid i think it's just like it, it was good it wasn't like extremely bad like nothing bad happened but nothing extremely good happened either you know it was just like mid like satisfactory like 7 out of 10 you know And a couple days after I went to Sin, I was back at Mei Mei. And this time I was there as Coco Chanello. And when I came to Mei Mei, I wasn't there alone. I was there with Jen. Okay guys, so we are about to go into Mei Mei. This time I'm my influencer self and I'm here <laughs> with Jen. And we're gonna see if they treat me any or us any differently now that they know that I'm an influencer. As you guys know, when I went there last time, I was not impressed. I felt like the service was a bit slow. I didn't really enjoy the food. This time I'm gonna order something different, so hopefully I do enjoy the food, but we're gonna see if the service is up to par. What do you think? I think it's gonna be a lot different. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I feel like when people see a big camera, because this isn't just like an iPhone. Mm -hmm. This is like a camera camera. This is a DSLR. It's like a production. Mm -hmm. They're gonna put on some type of show. Do like a 180 and treat you worse. Worse. Because you know how people feel about like influencers. They're like, oh like fuck the influencer. Literally. Uh -huh. But I feel like if they're if I'm coming with a camera, they obviously know like I'm gonna be like showing off May May. Yeah. I feel like they have to. But also like I was thinking, what if they don't let me record? <gasps> no, they they wouldn't do that. Because it's like you're not gonna be in anyone's face. face. I'm only gonna be in my own face. Literally. The thing about this experiment and like the perception of an influencer is that like I'm not big enough for people to know me just by walking up the street. Like the only way that you would know that I'm an influencer is if I was wearing this really grand outfit and I had a DSLR camera in my hand and I had a ring light and had a tripod. Then you could make the assumption that I'm an influencer. The same way that you can make an assumption that a person in scrubs works in the healthcare field. The same way you can make an assumption that someone wearing a police outfit is a police officer. If I'm wearing like a big grand outfit with camera equipment in my hand and a tripod and I'm recording myself you can make the assumption that I'm an influencer and having Jen there kind of gave me a little bit more credibility because I feel like influencers are rarely ever alone they're always with someone helping them film so having Jen there really did add to the Coco Chanello influencer character I guess so I got to Mei Mei and we were seated right away Hi. 
We were seated in the back, but we were seated in the back on the edge of the balcony. I was served right away. The server was so nice. And what makes her a little bit different from the previous server I had at Mei Mei is that she was really personable, really paying attention to my needs, especially when it came to the drinks. Like she was the one offering recommendations on how to alter drinks so that I'm satisfied. And I feel like only an attentive server would do that. I liked her a lot. Great server. Our drinks literally came out in three minutes. Oh yeah, it is like sweeter. Yeah, I really like this. And it's because she suggested that I have more citrus lime in it to make more citrusy. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. What I thought was really interesting is that there was like this couple seated behind us and we got our drinks before they got their drinks, even though they were seated and had their orders in first, which I thought was interesting. Just putting that out there. But that couple didn't order any food. We ordered food. And because I came with Jen, obviously we're ordering two times more food than I would have ordered if I was just by myself. So I was prepared for the wait time in between putting my order in and getting the food back. I knew it was gonna be a little bit longer. Well, I thought it was gonna be a little bit longer, but it wasn't. We got our food in 12 minutes, 12 minutes. And even as we're waiting for our food, even when we're eating our food, like things got a little bit busy, more customers started to come in. But even when more customers started to come in, I never felt like Jen and I were like an afterthought in their eyes. Like I never felt forgotten about. I actually felt like they were like watching us very closely, which I thought was really interesting. The food was really good. I got the spring rolls and instead of getting the kimchi fried rice, I got like regular like white rice, I think. And then I'm pretty sure Jen got um, shrimp tempura and noodles. Eventually we paid and then this is the funny part which I didn't even get on camera and I'm like so mad about that. As we were exiting every single person who worked there whether they were like a waiter or like a manager as we were like exiting they were all like bye bye hope you had a nice time coming again like oh bye bye. I really wish I got that on camera but I didn't and I thought that was really funny because when I was leaving Mei Mei as myself like that didn't happen to me. Like, I don't know, like it's just like, it's just little things, it's the little things, you know? So I would rate the service at Mei Mei to be like a nine out of 10 because it was like so much better this time. The server was better, the food tastes better. So that was Mei Mei. Now let's go back to Sin. When I went to Sin, I went with Jen. I was wearing the exact same thing. I came, I was seated in the booth. Like I was seated like two booths away from where I was like originally seated. And get this, we had the same server again. And I feel like because we had the same server, our service, was very consistent. Like obviously like he was a great server, very knowledgeable and everything. Comes with Kahlua, Bailey's, and a chocolate powder rim. Oh uh, yeah. So we have a lot of good options here. Take a look. I'll try the consistent. Yeah. yeah, okay. We ordered our food. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go with the muscles okay. and have yeah, yeah. whipped potatoes with that too. Okay. For yourself? Can I have the homie meatball? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's it. And our food came in 14 minutes instead of the 12 from before, which makes sense because we ordered more food this time, so it's gonna take a little bit longer for it all to come out. He was attentive to the both of us, but at Sin, it was pretty good. It was like basically the same as the last time I went to Sin, so I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10 again. Okay, now it's time for the side-by-side -side comparison, judging seating, service, wait time, and the overall. For the seating as a regular person, I was placed in the back corner. The seating as an influencer, I was placed on the balcony edge. For the service as a regular person, I felt forgotten about and they got my order wrong. But the service as an influencer, I felt like they were very attentive and very personable. The wait time as a regular person was 20 minutes for two things and the wait time for an influencer was three minutes for two drinks, then 12 minutes for four things. Overall, I would give my experience as a regular person a 5 out of 10 and overall I'd give my experience as an influencer a 9 out of 10. And I got a little bonus because I got a farewell exit from the staff 
as an influencer. But my personal opinion on Mei Mei is that it's mid. Philly is filled with such amazing restaurants. There's so many better options out here than Mei Mei, so I really don't see myself going back. Okay, let's talk about Sin. So, as a regular person, I was seated in the back booth, and as an influencer, I was seated in the side booth. As a regular person, my server was very attentive and knowledgeable, and as an influencer, my server was very attentive and knowledgeable. As a regular person, my wait time for my food was 12 minutes for two things, and as an influencer, my wait time for my food was two minutes for two drinks and 14 minutes for three things, and overall, I would give my experience as a regular person a 7 out of 10, and overall I'd give my experience as an influencer a 7 out of 10. My personal opinion of Sin is that the food is just not that good for what they're charging. I feel like you're paying more for the ambiance of the place rather than the actual food and that's just not where my priorities lie so I don't see myself going back. For the conclusion, although I had a better overall experience when I came as an influencer rather than a regular person, I don't feel like I was treated better because I was an influencer. I feel like I was treated better just because of the circumstances of of that day. For example, the seating at Mei Mei the first time, I feel like I was seated in the back corner because I was a party of one over anything else. And also, the day I went to Mei Mei as an influencer was a day that was particularly slower than the day that I went as a regular person, and because of that, they had a lot more time and energy to give me really good service, which is probably the reason why my food came out faster and my order wasn't wrong like it was the first time. There are just so many factors that could have affected the way I was treated. Treated. So I feel like for me to say that, oh, May May treated me better the second time because I was an influencer, I just feel like I can't say that. I feel like in order to make a statement that grand, a lot of factors need to be controlled. Like I need to make sure that I both have different servers or both have the same servers or I get the same food at all restaurants or I make sure I come by myself at all restaurants or I come with a person at all restaurants. I feel like there needs to be a lot of controlled factors in this experiment that I can't control with being just one person. So yeah, this video was not meant to make any restaurant look bad. I really, really, really tried to form this experiment in a way where I'm giving like a fair chance to both of them because for me, I just kind of want to be the messenger. I am a firm believer that if you are promoting this as a luxury experience with very high prices, you should be giving that to your customers, especially if there's 20% gratuity added to every single bill because that implies that every single service is worthy of a 20% tip because that's how much faith you have in your serving. But the reality is not all services are created equal. Some people will get good service and some people will get bad service. And like I said, when you promote yourself to be this luxury restaurant with high prices and high morals and stuff, there is less room and leniency for you to fail. If you expect a lot from your customers, your customers are gonna expect a lot from you too. And you have to be ready to deliver. And this video is just me making sure that restaurants stay on top of it. Treat every single customer the same way that you would treat a food influencer that was giving you a review. That's it. So I hope this video is helpful to you in some capacity. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.